Hi, this is Preace Chemistry section 2.1 on different types of substances. Pretty easy section. Um, talk about gases, liquids, and solids and their properties. So the phase of matter, that's basically just um, how a physical change occurs by heat energy. So either remove energy to get something like from liquid water to ice, or you add energy and go from liquid water to gas. And it'll talk about those different phases and their properties. So, which statement is true um, about matter? Atoms are not matter, but they are contained in matter. Matter exists only when you see it. Living things are not matter, or D, matter is made up of atoms. If you said D, then you are correct. Matter is made up of all atoms. So anything that is made of matter is made of atoms. We are made of atoms. This computer is made of atoms. Um, everything around us is made of atoms. <clears throat> there are three physical states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. A gas is takes up the volume and shape of the container. Um, liquids have a definite volume and take the shape of the container. So if you have a liquid water, it would be different shapes based on the container. And a solid is definite volume and definite shape. So no matter what you have, um, it's not always going to spread out in that container. <clears throat> Which state of matter has the most kinetic energy? So kinetic energy is movement of particles. So if you said gas, you are correct. Gases move the most amount of energy, or most amount of active energy, so that is a gas. Which state of matter has the least amount of kinetic energy? So other spectrum, um, no movement, lack of movement, um, you would say solid. <clears throat> Which state of matter are the particles the closest together or crystalline lattice structure? <clears throat> so they're closest together is going to be um, solids. So think of a crystalline lattice structure as like salt crystals. Um, those are all going to be solids. Which state of matter are particles free to slide past each other and take the shape of that container? So if they're free to slide past each other, you're going to say volume because they're sliding past each other. Gases are more empty space. Um, they're not as going to likely to shape, slide past each other. And which state of matter are particles free to move about in all directions and take the shape of that container? So that is your gas phase. Gases are going to free all about that directions, no matter what shape you have or what container you have. <clears throat> Changes of state. So if you were to add energy, so it gets hotter, you go from solid, it goes through melting phase to liquid, I'm sorry, it goes through melting and then liquid phase and evaporation and gas. If you get colder, meaning you re remove energy, um, that's what refrigerators do, they remove energy with coldness. Um, it goes from gas to condense, to liquid, and then it freezes into solid. So melting, solid to liquid, evaporation, liquid to gas, condensing is gas to liquid, freezing, liquid to solid. Sublimation is a new one we didn't talk about yet. Sublimation goes directly from a solid to a gas. So the most common sublimated um, compound or substance is dry ice. Dry ice is frozen carbon dioxide. And when you put that in room temperature, it sublimates into gas, as you can see here. All right, so this is a heating and cooling curve. It basically shows a graphical representation of different phases and their um, states. So at this is for liquid water, or for water. Um, at below zero degrees, you have ice, and that's because it's frozen. At when you reach zero degrees, the ice begins to melt into liquid water, and you have a phase change. Um, you have both phases occurring at the same time. What phase change is occurring when you add heat into it? That is melting, You're adding heat, ice, is going to start melt into liquid water. And as you can see there, it has water all the way up. Um, you can see the temperature starts to rise because you're in one phase. Only one phase, you'll have a temperature um, increase. 
Once water reaches 100 degrees, you have another phase change into steam. <clears throat> so what phase change is occurring here if heat is being removed? So removed means it's getting colder. So from steam to liquid, it is condensing. Once you hit above, all the liquid water is into steam, you go above 100 degrees and you have steam. Explain what is happening that causes heat to change but not temperature at the flat phase change. So the reason why there's no temperature change is that because you're in a phase change and all that phase that you're going from previously, so for example, liquid water into steam, all the liquid water has to be removed at 100 degrees to all, this, all the water steam. So you can't raise the temperature past 100 till all that water turns into steam. The added energy is being used to break down the lattice structure or the bonds that temperature does not rise. So to keep adding energy into it, even though the temperature is not changing, it's still breaking those bonds or structure down. All right, mixtures. So if you have a mixture it has a substance dissolved in another, it's a solution. So like Gatorade, um, Kool-Aid, those are all types of solutions. Salt water. So like some other examples, um, NaCl and water, salt water, soda, sugar, carbon dioxide, and water. Even though carbon dioxide is a, a gas, um, it's dissolved in water. That's why it's carbonated. Mixture that has a substance that isn't completely dissolved, particles are suspended. It's called a suspension. So you have like orange juice, salad dressing. Those things have to sh be shook, shaken um, to get those particles moving again so they're not totally suspended. So how do solutions differ from pure substances? So salt water, if you try to boil salt water, there's really lack of phase change. Um, so you can see the difference is that you won't get a constant temperature at 100. It starts to raise gradually. It doesn't, doesn't have a plateau. So the difference is determined by that not pure substance. So salt water gradually is going to have a climb in temperature during boiling where water would have a flat plateau. So salt water's boiling point is actually higher than pure water. Um, so if you're trying to make pasta, it's always better to put the salt at the end once it boils because it takes longer for it to boil if you put salt in previously. So same thing about freezing. Um, see the differences between pure water and salt water. Notice that the temperature is lower in salt, hence why they put salt on snow um, roadways, so make sure that ice actually melts down um, and it's not slippery. Pure water is constant at zero degrees Celsius, and salt water gradually goes lower. So let's look at a m model of it. So first, pure water. Um, atmospheric pressure keeps the water from escaping, uh, so there's a pressure pushing down on those molecules to keep it from leaving the phase. And then as you increase heat, um, more energy is causing the water to escape its pressure. So they're moving faster and faster and faster. And as they get more and more energy, they'll escape the atmospheric pressure and start to um, leave and become steam. So boiling occurs when the atmospheric pressure is equal to the pressure in the beaker or whatever substance, whatever container you have. So the pressure inside the liquid is equal to the pressure out in temperature, so it can escape into steam. And as they go. Now, if we have salt water, salt boils at a very high temperature, so it's not going to escape into steam. Um, but what happens here, the same thing occurs, the boiling point has to reach the pressure in the beaker compared to the atmospheric pressure. Now, water still needs energy, so 
to break the yeah, attractive force. So then you need more temperature to get away from that salt um, to break apart and escape into steam. So I kind of like use it as a, like a blocker or something like that in football. It has to get past the blocker, so it needs more energy to escape into um, steam. So it's getting blocked, 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 and then it needs enough energy to escape. For using the same concept, things get in the way, so you have to kind of use more energy to get them to freeze. So water forms a crystal structure, uh, ice, as you can see here. Now, when salt molecules interfere with water's bonding, they're going to need lower temperature to form that solid. So as you can see here, salt is in the way for water to actually make a um, crystal structure, so you need colder temperature to make it a solid.